The ABO and rhesus blood grouping systems are the most important ways of classifying a person's blood type. Let's first discuss the basics of the ABO blood grouping system. Let's first focus on the ABO blood grouping system and how the ABO blood group is inherited. We're going to draw a Punnett square showing how the ABO blood group genotype is inherited. Remember, the genotype of the ABO blood group is determined by the ABO alleles inherited from the father and the ABO alleles inherited from the mother. There can be A, B or O alleles being inherited from the father by the offspring. And similarly, there can be A, B or O alleles being inherited from the mother by the offspring. And hence, here are all the possible genotypes that the offspring can have. So there are overall six possible genotypes. There can be AA, AO, BB, BO, AB and OO. The phenotype expressed by each specific genotype is what determines the ABO blood group of the patient. Let's now discuss how each specific genotype corresponds to a specific ABO blood group. A key point which you guys must never forget is that the A and B alleles are co-dominant, whilst the O allele is recessive to both the A and B allele. A person with a genotype of AA will have an ABO blood type of A, and a person with a genotype of AO has an ABO blood type of A, as the A allele is dominant to the O allele, which is recessive. A person with a genotype of BB will have an ABO blood type of B, and a person with a genotype of BO will have an ABO blood type of B as well, as the B allele is dominant to the O allele, which is recessive. A person with a genotype of AB will have an ABO blood type of AB, as the A and B alleles are co-dominant, so both these alleles will be expressed. And finally, someone with a genotype of OO will have a blood type of O. So this is how a person's ABO blood type relates to their genetic genotype. Let's now go into what each different ABO blood type represents in a person's blood. So here we have the bloodstream, and here we have a red blood cell. A key definition to remember is the definition of an antigen. An antigen is a substance which can stimulate the immune response, particularly the production of antibodies. A key point which you must never forget is that each of the ABO blood groups are referring to the specific antigens on the surface of the red blood cells, not the antibodies in the plasma of the blood. That is a key point to remember. So again, the ABO blood groups are referring to the antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. So let's work out what's happening with each specific blood group. People who have a blood type A will have red blood cells that only contain the A antigen on the surface of the red blood cells. People with the blood type B will have red blood cells that only contain B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. People with the blood type AB will have red blood cells that have a combination of both A and B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. And finally, people who have the blood type O will have red blood cells that do not contain either A or B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. So hopefully it's clear what the ABO blood group means. So we've discussed the antigens on the surface of the red blood cells and that that's what corresponds to the specific ABO blood group. But it's important to realize that the body can also produce antibodies against the A and B antigens. Antibodies produced against the A antigens on the red blood cell surface are called anti-A antibodies and antibodies produced against the B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells are called anti-B antibodies. The presence of these antibodies are varied across the different ABO blood groups. So let's discuss what's happening with the antibodies for each specific ABO blood group. Let's consider a patient with blood type A. And remember, a patient with blood type A will have red blood cells that only have A antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. In terms of the antibodies, patients with blood type A will produce anti-B antibodies. They will not produce any anti-A antibodies. So there are two important questions to ask here. Why do patients with blood type A only produce anti-B antibodies and why don't patients with blood type A produce any anti-A antibodies? To understand the answer to these questions, it's important to realize that the production of antibodies requires the immune system to be exposed to the specific antigens. So for the immune system to produce anti-A and anti-B antibodies, the immune system must be exposed to the A and B antigens. But how does the immune system get exposed to the A and B antigens? Well, the answer to that question is our diet. The food we eat as we grow up actually contains the A and B ABO antigens. So as the food contains the A and B antigens, these antigens will be absorbed from the gastrointestinal tract and eventually reach the bloodstream. So this is how the immune system gets exposed to the A and B antigens. Now let's think about the antibodies produced. When the immune system gets exposed to the A antigens from the food, 
the immune system will not produce antibodies against these A antigens. So the immune system will not produce anti-A antibodies. The reason for this is because this patient has a blood type A. So this means that the red blood cells have A antigens on the red blood cell surface. So the immune system recognizes the A antigen as a self protein. So when the immune system gets exposed to the A antigens from the food, the immune system will not produce antibodies against these A antigens, as the immune system recognizes these A antigens as a self protein. Hence, this is why there's no anti-A antibodies being produced. On the other hand, when the immune system gets exposed to the B antigens from the food, the immune system will produce antibodies against these B antigens because the patient does not have any B antigens on their red blood cell surface, so the immune system will recognize these B antigens as a foreign protein, hence will try to mount an immune response, and in turn will produce antibodies against the B antigens, which is why there will be anti-B antibodies being produced. So hopefully we now understand why patients with ABO blood type A will have anti-B antibodies in their plasma, and no anti-A antibodies in their plasma. If you understood this, we can then easily work out what antibodies are present for the remaining ABO blood groups. Let's discuss a patient with blood type B, where the red blood cells have only B antigens on their red blood cell surface. Patients with blood type B will only have anti-A antibodies in their plasma. And the reason for this is, when the patient gets exposed to the A and B antigens from the food as we grow up, the immune system will recognize the A antigens as foreign as the patient is blood type B, so does not have any A antigens on their red blood cell surface, so will recognize the A antigens as a foreign protein, so will try to stimulate the immune response and produce antibodies against the A antigens, and hence this is why anti-A antibodies are produced. When the immune system is exposed to the B antigens from the food, the immune system will not produce antibodies against the B antigens, as this patient has B antigens on their red blood cell surface, so the immune system recognizes the B antigen as a self protein, hence will not produce antibodies against the B antigens, hence this is why patients with blood type B do not have any anti-B antibodies in their plasma. Moving on to a patient with blood type AB, again just to remind yourself, the red blood cells will have a combination of both A and B antigens on the red blood cell surface. In terms of the antibodies, Patients with blood type AB will not have any anti-A or anti-B antibodies in their plasma. The reason for that is, when patients with blood type AB get exposed to the A and B antigens from the diet, the immune system will not produce any antibodies against the A or B antigens. This is because patients with blood type AB have both A and B antigens on their red blood cell surface. So the immune system recognizes both the A and B antigens as self-proteins, hence when the body gets exposed to the A and B antigens through the diet, the immune system will not produce any anti-A or anti-B antibodies. And finally, a patient with blood type O will have red blood cells which don't have either A or B antigens on their red blood cell surface. In terms of the antibodies, patients with blood type O will have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies in their plasma. The reason for this is, when the patient gets exposed to the A and B antigens through the food as we grow up, the immune system will produce antibodies against both the A and B antigens from the diet as we grow up. And this is because the red blood cells in patients with blood type O do not have any A or B antigens. So the immune system does not recognize the A or B antigen as a self protein, and instead recognizes them both as a foreign protein. So the immune system will produce anti A and anti B antibodies against both the A and B antigens. Now let's summarize the ABO blood grouping system. There are overall four ABO blood groups. There's blood type A, blood type B, blood type AB, and blood type O. Patients with a blood type of A will have red blood cells that have only A antigens on their red blood cell surface, and in their plasma, they will have anti-B antibodies. Patients with blood type B will have red blood cells that only have B antigens on their red blood cell surface, and in the plasma, they will have anti-A antibodies. Patients with blood type AB will have red blood cells that have a combination of both A and B antigens. And in the plasma, there will be no antibodies against the A or B antigens. Patients with blood type O will have red blood cells that do not have either the A or B antigens on their red blood cell surface. And in the plasma, they will have both anti-A and anti-B antibodies. And that is the ABO blood grouping system.